Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you a cool firewall rule set that you can add to your WordPress HT access file that can help protect against the most common vulnerabilities on your WordPress install. So I've covered a ton of security plugins on the channel, I've covered how to disable Apache indexes, but the one thing that people normally get attacked by is vulnerabilities. And the most common vulnerability tends to come down to cross-site scripting attacks and SQL injections, at least for WordPress websites. The 7G firewall was developed by Jeff Starr. He's very active in the WordPress community. He even has a few plugins published. He is um, very much a WordPress security expert. And I don't think anybody would doubt that. The 7G firewall is basically just a custom rule set for Apache that you add your HT access file. So this should still work on Lightspeed servers. And it protects against those vulnerabilities that I had mentioned. I'm going to include a link in the description to his post that you can download the firewall from. But when you go through and read it, it basically it has a really clever set of rules that help protect against those vulnerabilities that I was listing. So I've opened it up over here in just a standard text editor to kind of walk you through what it adds and why it's so useful. So broadly, the first thing it does, it turns off server, server signatures, which send data such as um, what version of PHP it may be running. Um, if you've ever been on, you can always tell on a GoDaddy site too, because it always mentions something along GoDaddy's URL in the server headers that it sends. And this information can be useful to certain bad actors who may try to take advantage of your site's known vulnerability. Maybe you have an out-of-date PHP version, but it does remove the data. I also just remove it because frankly, I just think it looks nicer. I don't like having a bunch of useless crap in the headers sent to my potential visitors and that's just something I, I just like to do. But I'm probably in the minority. So when you install the plugin or the code or however you want to call it, you get this first major rule set. This is where the blocking actually starts to take place. So the first rule set matches query strings and it's aptly named and it's got a code uh, a code comment here. And it mentions that it's trying to, it's using mod rewrites and it detects if the user's query string matches a large collection of common query strings. The most obvious one that I can show you is right here where it starts with concatenation, delete, get, select, and union. Those are all very commonly used with SQL injection, where the user's trying to select data, delete it, and then trying to insert their own data. The firewall rules will help protect you against those common forms of attack. And it does this by matching the query string and then sending you elsewhere so that way when they try to access the URL, it gets stopped and they're not able to follow through with the request. So this can help even if you are running a vulnerable version of a plugin that is vulnerable to SQL injection. That is pretty cool for just a few lines of code that you could slap in your HT access file. Now, I'm going to address one important detail. You shouldn't have a vulnerable version of a plugin on your website. You should update it as quickly as possible. Just because this can help protect you against it, kind of like in the same way WordFence can, leaving an open vulnerability is just asking for somebody to hack you. And if the plugin's out of date and it has one known vulnerability, there's a really strong chance there's gonna be something else wrong with it. There's normally always, normally whenever you approach having like a plugin is, you pretty much always expect there to be some, some sort of vulnerability in it already. You just don't know what it is. It's kind of like when Elementor recently had a major vulnerability that they pushed out in an update that affected millions of websites. And I had quite a bit of work cleaning up websites like that. And all it took was to update it again to the absolute latest version. So sometimes you can update a plugin and it will introduce a vulnerability in the updates. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep your plugins up to date to protect against older vulnerabilities but you also need to be aware that zero day vulnerabilities are a major threat. This can help protect you against it in the same way Cloudflare can, but please practice proper maintenance, keeping your site up to date, keeping it optimized, keep it running well on a decent host. Now that I've gotten that spiel, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next thing, which is matching your quest URIs. These are common URL, well, not URIs, URLs that somebody tries to match. It says URI, but I'm just gonna say URLs. Basically, they're common strings that somebody matches in a URL that they're trying to access. So for instance, if they match something, um, 
if the amount of, let's see ck finder if they're trying to find a url that has that first of all no wordpress site is going to have that i hope not at least there's not really a reason that somebody's going to be accessing that another weird one is there's zero day at the uh bottom for request uri condition and mysql and keyword spy and a bunch of other stuff and basically the plugin is just catching urls and query strings that somebody's trying to access because they know that there's something vulnerable and if it does exist it tries to shut them out this will pretty much work out of the box on most wordpress installs i've been running it for over a year i totally forgot about it until fairly recently and it's something i just recommend you add what's also great is that it has a bunch of rules to stop bad bots ah bots are very much the pain uh, pretty much uh, have everybody's existence in WordPress. So you have a large set of rules in here, the 360 spider. I'm not really sure why that one was matched. The 360 spider is commonly used in China, but I wouldn't call it notoriously bad, kind of like Ahrefs. Ahrefs is a very annoying bot and it does waste your resources like crazy, especially when you don't pay for Ahrefs but it does block the bots. It blocks all the bad bots and it stops them from trying to waste your resources. So it, it just goes through and it just, it's just really helpful at blocking nonsense bots. If your host has ever said, oh, you need to block bad bots to reduce your impact on your server so that way your site runs faster. I'm just gonna say right now, that's normally never the case. Uh, normally when I am approached with a website that does have performance issues, it's almost never because of bots. But the host will say almost, a bad host will say anything that they can to push the blame off onto anything else that isn't their platform. But I digress. And then there are some HTTP refers that it will match and remote hosts that it will also try to match and block. One thing to watch out for is it does have Amazon AWS. Um, if you have something that's dependent on that, you may need to remove this specific rule but the rest of them are basically nonsense and they are spam, especially Colo Crossing. Um, those of you who are not in the sphere of to know, Colo Crossing is basically just a giant server farm. And I would say most, if not all the traffic they send is, it's garbage. It's, it's just a server farm. It's not used by any major VPN that I can name. And it's mostly just websites with bad bots going around trying to scrape content from other websites. And they don't care. They, they don't shut it down unless they absolutely have to. So I actually block Colo Crossing outright. I block their entire network and Cloudflare for most websites. And it just saves you so many resources. And what's great is you just see the long list of bots. And I sometimes I just check the IP address to see if they come back as spam. They always do. So it's great that it does block that. It will block the met. It'll block certain methods as well. So if somebody's trying to send a request method of, let's say trace, you can go ahead and block that tracking, blah, 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 blah. It just blocks basically everything that a non-legitimate user would be after. The installation process also is super simple. So long as you're on WordPress that has Apache or Lightspeed, even if you have Nginx as a proxy to reduce the impact on your server, all you have to do is copy the code when you get it from the website, it comes in a TXT document. Just open it right up, copy the entire thing, and then you paste it in your HT access file. You want to paste it above your WordPress rule, rewrite rules if you can. Uh, sometimes certain plugins will overwrite the content that is above it, and sometimes a security plugin may not let you write above or have access to the file at all, so you'll need to keep that in mind. Other than that, it doesn't really matter how you add the code. You can use DOS SEO tools just to make sure that you paste it exactly above the line that says begin WordPress. Add a couple of extra spaces if you need to. Just don't delete anything that is essential or you're going to cause yourself problems. You could do it via FileZilla and you could do it via File Manager in your cPanel. You just paste the rules in there, you save. I recommend clearing your cache if you have a server side cache or you have a page cache. And if you're caching via Cloudflare, you shouldn't need to flush the rules, but if you want to, of course you can. Other than that, you should just go through and do a test. While I haven't experienced any issues working on WooCommerce sites, um, some that are powered by Elementor, Divi, Beaver Builder, 
and of course just standard Gutenberg, I haven't run into any issues, but you don't, you never know. So when you add this on a site that is selling a service or a product, just make sure you check your rules and you make sure that you go through a checkout process, run a test checkout to make sure that your site is not running into any issues. And one more detail is that the 7G firewall does come with logging functionality. I am not going to be showing you how to set up the logging functionality, primarily because I don't think that you should really need logging for this functionality unless you're debugging. And if you're debugging, the first thing I just recommend doing is turning off the code altogether. And you probably would be just fine without it. But if you want something a little bit stronger, the 7G firewall definitely provides. If you have any questions about this, I, I'll try to help you as best I can, but I am not the author of this rule set. Jeff Starr did a fantastic job on it. Um, but if you have any questions, ask in the comments. I'll try to help you out. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.